Welcome to Consumer Update. I'm Kelly Lightborn. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, the holidays are officially here, and along with all the festivities comes a lot of great food that is just way too tempting to pass up. But for many, that's just not a good thing. Here to tell us more about overindulging during the holidays and how it can impact your health is Dr. Benjamin Sadowitz with Florida Hospital Tampa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is definitely the time of year that we eat, 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 and eat more. Absolutely. <laughs> and we know it's not good, but sometimes we think it's not good because we're gaining weight, but there's other reasons that we shouldn't eat. Sure. You know, I think for patients, especially patients who have reflux disease and patients who have gallbladder disease, overindulgence during the holidays can lead to an emergency room visit. And um, you know, the best way to avoid that is not to overindulge, but um, I think that can be difficult, especially during the holiday season. We tend to see more patients who have those problems come through our doors over the next five weeks. Wow. Now at Florida Hospital Tampa, your practice is actually specializes in this. So specifically, what do you specialize in? So I work with Dr. Ross and Rose Murgy's group at Florida Hospital okay. Tampa. Um, they specialize in digestive disorders and pancreatic cancer. And they also specialize in minimally invasive surgical approaches to treat these disorders. Okay, and you guys have a, a history of this. Like sometimes you'd say, oh, I'm just gonna go to my, to my regular doctor, which is not a good idea because mm -hmm. they treat everything, but you guys specialize in it. Exactly. Why should we go to you? Well, exactly. Dr. Rose Murgy has been dealing with digestive disorders for over 30 years. Okay. And Dr. Wow. Ross has worked with him for over 10 years. Um, I'm currently one of his fellows and I came down to receive training in these techniques and in these disorders because they are specialists. These are diseases that they deal with every day in their practice. Now they have one of the most extensive practices, right, like the Southeast. They do. I mean, it's, it's not just, you know, you think, oh, Tampa, but it's, we have- Oh, it's within the Southeast and yeah. even, even within the country. Wow. Um, they really do. Dr. Rosenbergi has done um, over 20,000 cases, many of them dealing with digestive disorders, and Dr. Ross has done a fair number as well, and this is really their specialty. This is what, uh, what they do. Wow, well, let's get into what you do. Let's go back to the reflex, because sure. a lot of people will kind of pass it off. They think it's a one-time thing. What are, sure. what are some of the signs that we look for? I wouldn't even know. So for reflux disease, one of the main symptoms people will have is they'll feel a burning in their chest, especially after eating certain foods, whether it's caffeine, whether it's spicy foods, um, alcohol, a lot of those things can aggravate um, their heartburn or their reflux disease. Um, some of the more uncommon things though uh, are things like a dry cough that's persistent, that doesn't go away. Um, things like um, regurgitation of sort of sour tasting liquid. Mm -hmm. All of those things can be symptoms of reflux. Wow. And I think over time, some people get used to them and write them off as getting older or stress or something else, mm -hmm. but it actually could be reflux disease. Yeah, I would never have thought the dry cough. Mm -hmm. Like that just kind of, I kind of went, huh. Yeah. But there are treatments out there that can help. So people go, oh, I'm stuck with this. This is just who I am. I'm gonna have a dry cough. Yeah. I'm gonna regurgitate, but that's yeah. not the case. There's No, solutions. absolutely. There, there's medical treatments for reflux disease mm -hmm. and there's surgical treatments for reflux disease. I think many people go the medical route because you can get quick alleviation of the symptoms of reflux disease. Okay. And in fact, if you look at the sales of PPIs, which are the main drugs that treat reflux disease, I think last year alone, sales were between nine and $10 billion. So wow. medically, it's very, become very costly to treat reflux disease. But um, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, but, uh, but surgically, uh -huh. you know, surgically, when we treat the disease, we're actually providing a cure. The, the medical treatment covers up the symptoms of the disease, ah. but the surgical treatment actually takes care of the mechanistic problem that is there. So you're answering all my questions, I was ask you the benefits, and it, yeah. clearly there is a benefit to doing the surgery. There definitely is. People who have reflux, the valve that sits between their esophagus and stomach doesn't work well. And while the medications, like I said, can alleviate the symptoms, there's actually a mechanical problem with the valve that only surgery can fix. And there's actually multiple options to fixing that valve. Now, is there preventative measures that you can take? Absolutely. So if you have reflux disease, um, some of the things we encourage patients to do, and probably one of the hardest things to do is to lose weight. That's one of the biggest things that exacerbates reflux disease. And if you look at the trends in this country, we definitely have um, over the past decade or so, a trend towards more and more people being obese. Mm -hmm. And obesity has <laughs> definitely um, it's definitely known to exacerbate reflux. So one of the first things we do with our patients when they come to us for reflux is we put them on a diet plan. And we actually have a diet plan that we'll put people on to help them lose weight 
in preparation for surgery mm -hmm. if they do in fact need surgery for their reflux. And it's, it's great to make them accountable because it's not just a holiday problem. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. A lot of us overeat all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the strongest um, attributes of Dr. Ross and Rosemurgie's practice is that they partner with their patients. Because surgery, you know, many times Dr. Ross will say to her patients, surgery is a marathon and you have to prepare for it. And it's not just something that you prepare for once and after the surgery is done, you go back to old habits. Mm -hmm. It's about making lifestyle changes that are durable and sustainable. And if you can make those changes, the surgery will be successful. Wow. If you can't make some of those changes, the surgery over time, especially for people who are putting on weight, will ultimately fail. See, I love this team approach, because sometimes when you go to, to doctors, you feel like you're alone in the battle. And mm -hmm. at your practice, you're not alone. No, in fact, we're gonna present some data in about two, three months at a national conference of reflux patients we've followed for the past 20 years and how they've done for the past 20 years with their reflux surgery. And those results were very, very encouraging. In fact, over 95% of the patients that we followed from the study would have the surgery again because it provided such durable and sustainable results. See, and that's great to hear because sometimes people have surgeries and they, it makes the problem worse or like you said, only band-aids it, but this doesn't sound like it does. No. Um, what are some of the foods that people should avoid? In terms of foods to avoid, especially for reflux disease and even gallbladder disease, fried foods mm -hmm. will always exacerbate those symptoms. Sometimes spicy foods will exacerbate your reflux. Caffeine, and I know that's a big one for many people because caffeine's mm -hmm. a big part of their day. Um, alcohol and smoking. Those are some of the big things to avoid when it comes to help, uh, helping out with the reflux symptoms. And you guys also see um, gallbladder issues as well. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of people who either have stones in their gallbladder mm -hmm. that can give them pain, there's a lot of people who have a gallbladder that doesn't function well, even without stones that can cause pain. Um, and we have um, very unique, minimally invasive approaches to take care of that issue. In fact, wow. for both the reflux disease and for the gallbladder disease, if it mm -hmm. comes to having a surgical procedure, we can do that surgical procedure through the natural scar you have in your belly button. That's the only incision that's made. Oh, it's an wow. incision smaller than two centimeters. All our instruments go through a specialized port that goes through the belly button and we can do both procedures, the um, removal of the gallbladder mm -hmm. and the anti-reflux procedures through a simple incision in the belly button. So how do they find you? What's the best way? The best way to find us is, well, there's a couple of ways actually, um, through the Florida Hospital Tampa website, okay. so fhtampa.org uh, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you go to www.sharonaross.com, that will connect you with Dr. Ross and Dr. Rosemary. It'll show you all the procedures that they do, It'll show you the diet plan they put people on to help them lose weight. Uh, it'll give you um, information and even patient uh, testimonials on how patients have done with the surgery. Oh, that's great. All that information is available online. So they can learn a little before they come in. Absolutely. Well, a lot of great information, especially for the holidays. So thanks for coming in. Absolutely. My pleasure. Coming up next, sinkholes are something no one wants to think about. But if you live in our part of Florida, it's important to know who can help if you're affected by one. More when we come back.